I'm a rabid libertarian, rabid libertarian. Um, you know, you make me do something, and if I'm already doing it, I'll stop doing it. Even if I thought it was a good idea and it was something I wanted to do. No, I'm not going to be told what to do. Santa Cruz is where I, uh, we broke f free of, the, of trying to accommodate the prevailing uh, norm, both as a physiological model and as a business model, and struck out and opened our own gym. And this fitness for us is work capacity measured across broad time and modal domains. And uh, I think anything that you can measure, you can race. When people go to the Gold's Gym or, or 24 Hour Nautilus, they don't come out the door every hour, first place, third place, here comes fifth, here comes eighth. But they do out of our workouts. You know, each time you come in, you come out ranked, at least for that last exposure. And uh, that brought a very different kind of person around. I was living in Santa Cruz and I was a deputy sheriff and working out really hard every day. And then I heard this rumor start to circulate around town. And the rumor was, hey, there's this crazy gym, crazy workouts and this crazy coach. And that was very compelling to me. So I found the number and called, and Greg Glassman, the founder of CrossFit, answers the phone. And kind of tentatively, I said, hey, can I come work out with you? He said, yeah, come tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., and be ready. And next morning, I show up, one workout with Coach Glassman, and I knew that he had the holy grail to fitness, and I never looked back. And I'm a CrossFit coach, and I'm a CrossFit athlete, and I coach out of Greg's gym here, CrossFit Amundsen. I also coach out of CrossFit West Santa Cruz, which is a few miles down the road. The movements are are universal motor recruitment patterns. They predate history, all of them, and yet they're, and they're uh, ubiquitous. I mean, these things, they are, they are everywhere, uh, except in gyms. You don't, you're on a construction site, people lift things and squat and do all this kind of stuff all day long. But in the gyms, they do things like this. The elite athletes that we have at the games, but also the athletes behind you in the gym, they are, they, are, they are after what we refer to as a ready state of physical fitness. So these elite athletes at the games achieve such a high level of physical fitness in so many fitness domains that they're ready. They're at this ready state. And from that state, with a little bit of specific training in any other skill or sport, they dominate because their body and mind are so, so well trained. They can just do anything. This community, by fact of your participation in these workouts, You've kind, of, you've kind of veered from, the, from what is the holy grail of, of the fitness industry, whereas I'm going to make you fit in just a few minutes and without much sacrifice or discomfort. You know, the thigh master thing, we're just going to sit here during commercials and have beautiful shapely legs. And markets are unknowable, but excellence is obvious to everyone. And markets, to the extent that they are free and unfettered, will move capital in the direction of the, of the excellence. So today, where do we stand from the launch of that first affiliate uh, seven years ago? We now have 6,000 and counting with a 95% uh, survival rate. The implementation, the, uh, the value socially and psychologically of, of enduring and suffering and communal sacrifice and sharing and we're building, I don't know if it's a Stockholm-like uh, um, <laughs> syndrome or not, but um, it was a, a captain from the first Special Forces group, Michael Perry, that sent me a, just a wonderful email where he said that he had learned through his CrossFit training um, just what the constituent pieces were to the camaraderie that was so essential to the Green Berets. And he said it was agony combined with laughter. The community and the family atmosphere was evident from the moment that Greg extended his hand and said, welcome to the gym, kid. I felt not just part of a workout experience, I felt part of a community and a family. The USDA diet is a grain-based uh, diet, and uh, our view is that the grains are best consumed by livestock, and that uh, what, uh, what Homo sapiens need is a diet of meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. It does happen with some regularity uh, that uh, eventually you will push hard enough that you make yourself sick. Actually, guys from uh, uh, U.S. Department of Justice 
had, that had first approached us had uh, made contact initially uh, with that story that they had experimented with the workouts and, and then delayed the experimentation several times due to a mysterious flu that seemed to wipe everyone out at the end of the workouts. You know, we're, we're rough edged and authentic and uh, yeah, you might puke and we have a clown that, uh, that pukes and we're putting them on the side of our airplane because it makes us laugh. I've met Pukey multiple times, multiple times. But then again, you're doing this for competition so you kind of have to, have to go there, so. You know, we ask all the time, is this a cult? And we just get pissed off and say, no, it's not a cult. Well, we heard it so many times and it was asked sincerely enough that it, it early became important to ask the question ourselves. And, you know, I, just, I mean, what if, what if we are a cult? I'm running and I don't even know it. You know, I mean, what, the worst kind of cult, right? You, you know, they, no, this is, a, this is an active, loving, uh, sweating, uh, breeding community. Yeah, the caveman thing, it's a, I'll tell you what, it's a, I don't think it's an insult to any, to any, any CrossFitter. Yeah, cult of the caveman. What are you gonna do? The whole CrossFit, you know, political view, it's definitely rogue, it's definitely libertarian, it definitely goes against the norm, against the man, like screw the machine, all that sort of stuff. I'm a rabid libertarian. Um, I uh, found Milton Friedman young, as a, as a high school student. I read uh, Fatal Conceit and The Road to Serfdom over and over and over again. In fact, I, they've almost been in serial reading for uh, 25 or 30 years. And the, the profundities there are, are, uh, are just, just spectacular. These are works that, that I don't see refutations to so much as reactions to. This year we had 150,000, just under 150,000 uh, participants in the open face. The games are a promotional vehicle for the affiliates because the open competition with 150,000 athletes, um, significantly less than 1% of those, will, those workouts will happen um, outside of affiliates' boxes, outside of affiliates' gyms. In the early days, and by early day I'm referring to 2001, 2, and 3, it was a big deal if in the gym you did 20 pull-ups. Now we've got people doing 100 pull-ups. <laughs> I think our crowning fittest man and woman in the world is is is, is tight as, uh, as a, a winner of a Super Bowl is in claiming that their, their dominance in football and that there's uh, not much belief at this point, I think, that there's someone out there fitter hiding. But uh, boy, we'd love to find them, you know. People so often are looking for the easy way. And I think that CrossFit um, is potentially not universally attractive the same way that playing the violin or learning physics is not going to be supremely attractive to people. But what a, what a wonderful world it is to, to share with people that are of the mindset that anything that's worth uh, uh, achieving will come with a, a substantial sacrifice and commitment with a blood, sweat, tears, and other bodily fluids. It's always fascinating to me to think that the lessons that we're learning in the gym such as discipline, accountability, honesty, perseverance. Those are great for the gym, but more importantly, they radiate out into every other endeavor the athletes do. And so, yes, it's a phenomenal physical fitness program, but also this is mental training. This is training for life. And so CrossFit literally makes better people.